Welcome to the Silent Green in Berlin. Welcome to the second day of the Jazz Fest Berlin. Welcome to our first marathon day of eight hours of, of a fully packed program and streaming program. Welcome also to the first day of our Jazz Fest Berlin, New York. Welcome Emily Bookwalter at the Roulette in Brooklyn, New York. Thank you, Nadine. Hello and welcome to Jazz Fest Berlin 2020 from Roulette here in downtown Brooklyn, New York. I'm Emily Bookwalter and I'm the Director of Development here. This is the first time that Roulette's had the honor of privileging, the honor of partnering with Jazz Fest Berlin, but our missions have long been aligned. With over 90 years experience between our organizations, Roulette was founded in 1978, Jazz Fest in 1964, our decades-long shared commitment of supporting artists and inspiring curious audiences like you, no matter the circumstances, have united us to present an extraordinary lineup celebrating artists, their talent, and our shared resiliency in the face of extreme challenge. You're watching tonight's roulette live stream from our six-camera robotic system mounted around our renovated 1928 Art Deco Theater. Normally, Roulette presents about 120 music, dance, and intermedia shows from this hall each year. But, like tonight's live stream, we're presenting our fall season completely free and virtually to ensure that artists remain safe, visible, and paid during a time when they're struggling most. If you like what you hear and see tonight, I do encourage you to check out more of Roulette's season at www.roulette.org. Whether you already know and love us, Berlin Silent Green, Jazz Fest, or you're new here, thank you for tuning in, and you're in for a real treat. To that end, it is my pleasure to introduce today's co-moderator, WBGO's Nate Chinen. Mr. Chinen is an acclaimed jazz journalist, WBGO's director of editorial content, a celebrated author of the book, Playing Changes, Jazz for the New Century, and a former critic for the New York Times. With over 20 years experience writing about jazz, there are few individuals better suited to help lead us through today's musical journey. Please welcome to the roulette stage, Nate Chinen. Good morning, Nate. Good morning, Nate. Good morning, Nadine. It's How such a pleasure doing? to be with you virtually this morning, uh, evening for you. Um, and I want to thank Emily and Roulette for the gracious welcome. Um, it's such a, a wonderful partnership um, between this venue here where I've seen so many incredible shows um, and this uh, amazing historic festival. It's a big honor to have you on board as a co-moderator and co-host. Uh, what will happen to today is we will present the first part of our Jazz Fest Berlin New York cooperation, meaning the first three tandems teaming up between bands playing live at Roulette in Brooklyn, New York, and then here at the Silent Green in Berlin. And I hand the audience over to you, Tenen. Nate, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nadine. You know, th this is such a wonderful example of dialogue. There's always been an artistic dialogue between these scenes, and we, we see it uh, in quite a literal fashion today. Uh, and we're going to open with a, a very exciting program. Um, saxophonist Lakeisha Benjamin, uh, earlier this year, released uh, a wildly ambitious and, and beautifully soulful album called Pursuance, The Coltrane's. Uh, dedication to the music of John and Alice Coltrane. And this album includes what seems like a cast of thousands, uh, I guess it's actually dozens, but um, just an amazing, amazing all-star lineup. Um, for our purposes today, she will have a terrific quartet with Zakai Curtis on piano, Lonnie Plaxico on bass, and E.J. Strickland on drums. So without any further ado, please welcome Lakeisha Benjamin uh, with her album, uh, with a celebration of her album uh, playing the music of John and Alice Coltrane.
All right, all right, all right. Berlin Jazz Fest. I know you're out there somewhere. How you guys doing? So, so excited to be here. We are celebrating and paying homage and tribute to the life of John Coltrane and Alice Coltrane, my heroes, the world's heroes, humanity's heroes. Give it up for Zakai Curtis on the piano. Lonnie Plaxico, we call him OG Lonnie Plaxico, holding it down on the bass. E.J. Strickland on the drums. My name is Lakeisha Benjamin, and I'm on saxophone and all other matters when it comes to this band. That first song was a John Coltrane selection entitled Liberia. It's off one of his favorite, uh, famous records, Coltrane Sound. And I like to do that song to set the mood, set the energy, and set the tone spiritually of what we're gonna be doing. Today we're coming out here spreading love and joy to all the people in lockdown, all the people suffering from COVID-19, all the people in the world that just need to feel loved and embraced. There's so much isolation going on, so my goal is hopefully you can feel me through this screen and we can connect. We're gonna continue on with a John Coltrane song entitled Saida's Song Flute.
All right, cyber audience. Woo, 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 woo. We're going to move on to um, the reason I know who John Coltrane is, Miss Alice Coltrane, the wonderful pianist, harpist, guru, spiritual leader, ashram leader. On the CD, we feature so many artists. We feature Regina Carter, Dee Dee Bridgewater, Gary Bartz, Ron Carter, Reggie Workman. And we all together come along to celebrate these two lives. Alice Coltrane had some very famous compositions of her own, but I also am a big fan of the way that she plays hymns. We're gonna do Alice Coltrane's version of Walk With Me. And we're gonna let the intro feature Mr. Zakai Curtis.
That beautiful piano solo. <laughs> this is probably a good time to mention that we've been for nine months. So you guys are hearing us for the first time since March 11th at the CD release party at Jazz Lincoln Center. So this is exciting for me. It's emotional, but it's such a great experience. The whole concept of the CD was bringing people together and bringing multiple intergenerational experience. Lonnie Plaxico is up here looking like he's 18 years old, <laughs> but he's played with Dizzy Gillespie. He's played with Abby Lincoln. He's played with Art Blakey. And he's played with so many of the masters that we all listen to their records and strive to be like them. And he's had a bit of the sauce. I like to keep people like that close to me. So maybe I can get a little bit of it. We can't hear you, but we know you'll clap to your screens when you do hear this. Use all the power you have in your arms to put it together for OG Lonnie Plaxico on the bass. I think tomorrow is his 19th birthday. <laughs> Holding us down on the drums, this is his second time playing with us. And um, they say a band's only as good as his drummer. <laughs> and EJ Strickland is sure enough keeping me from rushing keeping me from going anywhere, keeping me on time, and keeping me with that fire and the spirit of Elva Jones and Rashid Ali, Mr. E.J. Strickland. That last song we played was a Alice Coltrane song entitled Turiya Ramakrishna. Most people tell me it sounds like a love song, but it's actually Turiya, which means the constant waning feeling and drive to go for something in Ramakrishna, the God, so it's a constant, constant seeking out 
the creator and your purpose and why are you here and what is your purpose in life and getting closer to the source of the one that gave you life. So it's a pretty deep song. So it is a love song, but it's a love song to the universe. I think we're running out of time here and you know, Coltrane music, you could play that for three hours and still only get through six songs. I think the best way to close this off is to play the Love Supreme Suite. We're only gonna play a couple pieces from it, but I like to start off the suite with Alabama because it reminds me of how far we've come from an ugly past that some of our countries have and to move forward from that ugly past with love. So we're gonna play Alabama, an acknowledgement, and maybe we'll get into pursuance depending on how I feel. I would like to thank Berlin Jazz Fest for having me. I would like to thank Roulette for having us and making this space safe and wonderful. I would like to thank my booking agent, 3D Family. If you're out there, thank you for the hard work you're doing during this COVID-19. Artists are struggling, but managers are struggling. Journalists are struggling. Photographers are struggling. Dancers are struggling. The tech crews, the sound engineers, the people that make this show possible, we thank you for being here and being here with us. The people on lockdown in Germany, we're here with you. And when it's time to open up, trust me, Lakeisha Benjamin's coming over there to party. Thank my management, Gail Boyd, Lita Liebman on PR. You know, it's not a Grammy speech, but thank you guys for having me. This is Love Supreme.
Right, thank you. Thank you so much, Lakeisha Benjamin Quartet today. Oh my goodness. Um, what an amazing thing to, to be witnessing in this room. Um, Lakeisha, you know, one word kept coming to my mind, and it's a word that I think both Alice and John Coltrane used, um, and that word is offering. Um, and I wonder if you could reflect on that, especially given that, you know, this is the first time I've heard music in a room <laughs> since that early March period, and I know it's the first time that you've played with a band since that time. So um, how can you, what, what do you think of that idea that this, this music is an offering? Um, I think in the liner notes, uh, John Murphy did those liner notes, I talked about that when we did the album, we recorded it, I tried to experience the whole album from the perspective of, you know, not to try to surpass what they did or make. To me, Central Park West, the, the version that John Coltrane played is the best it's gonna ever get on the planet. So all I can do is offer a present, almost like this is what you mean to me, this is what you guys have done for humanity. So I tried to imagine the whole album as if they were sitting in the studio booth watching it not just the music, if they were watching me talk, watching how I interacted with my band members, watching what I ate, what I said. So to be, to be mindful, almost like, not that they're, they're divine people, but that the holiness is there so that at the end of the day, I could hand them the CD and say, thank you. And I ho hopefully they would love it, but to just say, this is what you have meant to me. I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this. As a saxophonist, I'm sure that a lot of people would look to you with this project and think, okay, John Coltrane is the primary frame of reference, but you have such a deep and longstanding relationship with Alice's music. Um, and I love the fact that this album has a subtitle, The Coltrane's, um, because there is such a, a dialogue um, between both of their music. And so I wondered, at what point did you know that you wanted to bring both of them into, the, into focus on this album and really put them on an even plane? I think the moment I realized that we had done a tribute to John Coltrane at Jazz Lake Center for WBGO for um, Rhonda Hamilton's night. And everyone was like, oh, this is so outstanding. One day you should do a Coltrane album. And after the show, I was like completely, I felt depressed almost, like a little down. I, I, I didn't enjoy, I enjoyed the show, but I didn't enjoy everything. And when I got home, I realized why did I say a John Coltrane tribute? Why didn't I say an Alice Coltrane tribute? And I think it was at then that I felt that, to me, their music, it's hard to separate it. It's almost like the yin and yang of each other. That's such a beautiful 
um, sentiment, and I feel it so much um, in the music of this band. So um, thank you again so much to all of you. Um, what a wonderful way to begin today's program. Um, so thank you again, Lakeisha, Zakai, Lani, EJ. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Germany. Shout out to Germany. Um, and so, yes, we have standing by here um, Lena Alemano's Orange Mouse. Uh, and, uh, you know, we want to get right to the music. So uh, I, I, without any further ado, we will toss it over to Berlin.
I'm going to try the uh, talk back mic here. Um, I, I wasn't going to, uh, I was planning on not speaking between tunes, but Lakeisha uh, inspired me with her eloqu eloquent um, talking. So, uh, of course, I can't live up to that because I'm just me. <laughs> but uh, I thought I would tell you that um, we started off with um, a tune from our album. Rats and Mice, and the tune was called Gerüstet Peanut, which is a combination of German and English, I guess. It doesn't make a lot of sense, like most of my titles. And then we uh, segued, no, we didn't segue, we actually stopped. We played Gruner Schmaus after that, and uh, that featured the remarkable Dan Peter Sundland on the bass. And I know that you're out there clapping right now, like mad, maybe even jumping up and down. Um, and now we're going to play another tune from our album. This one's called Ostsee, which in English is the Baltic Sea. And this is going to feature our incredible drummer, Michel Griner, from Nuremberg, originally. I didn't tell you that Dan Peter's from Trondheim, originally, Norway. Here we go. Thank you. 
I was joking earlier that I was going to do a shout out to my mom. But uh, hey, why not? Um, hey, mom. Uh, it's really early in the morning for my mom. She's in uh, Edmonton. I, I should also say my dad, too. I don't know why I left my dad out of it. It's just a, the joke is that you say hi to your mom, I guess, on, when you're on TV. Um, so anyway, hi, mom and dad. Um, I hope they're having a nice coffee right now in Canada. Uh, you guys want to play uh, Year of the Eye next? Okay, we're going to stick with the set list. Since uh, no one's telling us otherwise, we're going to play another tune from our album. This is called Year of the Eye, which was formerly called Toronto Sketch Number no. 1, for those of you who are really into trivial details.
I have to admit, it's unnerving when there's silence after the tunes, but in my imagination, there's other things, like, I don't know, maybe Dan Pater's making some funny noises that you can't hear. Um, you want to stay with the set list? Okay. So we're going to play something that's uh, totally brand new, um, we've never performed it. Actually, like Lakeisha was saying in uh, her set, of course, uh, none of us have really... Well, you guys had uh, more opportunities to play, I think, than us, uh, those of us who are in North America. Um, this is my first time that I've been able to get back since the pandemic started, um, get back to Berlin. And um, we haven't had a chance to play together in ages because of that. So um, this is very nice opportunity for us and we're really happy that uh, Nadine asked us to participate in this amazing festival which has yeah, had to morph into this uh, television program overnight basically. Crazy time so uh, thanks to all the crew here and everyone doing such an amazing job and the, the team at the festival and Nadine for, for keeping this uh, alive during all this craziness and uh, of course we hope that you're all out there staying safe and healthy. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, I was gonna tell you that this is a brand new tune. This is called Inner Feline, which actually, speaking of my mother, she titled this one inadvertently. So here we go. Never been played before. Let's see what happens. Ah.
thanks. So uh, how do we know when we're, uh, when we're done? <laughs> Lina, Lina, Dan Petter, and Michael, could you please join me here in our interview corner? This is what just has been told to me, the man in my ear, Thomas. Thank you, <laughs> Thomas. We have just uh, listened to Lina Alemano's Ohrenschmaus and the three fantastic musicians. Please join me here. Please come. And maybe also now we do understand why this trio is called an international improvising power trio. Please come <laughs> further into the light. Thank you. Thank you for your concert. It was beautiful. Lina, we have just heard, we need to go a bit further into the light, please. We have just heard by um, Lakeisha Benjamin that she has been inspired very much by the music of Alice and John Coltrane uh -huh. for her album. You also released very recently in March the first album of Ohrenschmaus. What was your source of inspiration? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, the, 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 the uh, album title is Rats and Mice. So we're, we're, we're a little bit, uh, yeah, we're not as impressive as uh, Lakeisha with her inspiration, I'm afraid. But um, yeah, it's um, a little bit of a, well, I like to make, you know, fun of myself and situations as much as possible. So it's a bit of a reference to, um, the apartment that I uh, was living in in Berlin, which had a lot of beautiful little creatures that lived with us, <laughs> like rats and mice. Nice. Mm. And uh, among the three of you, who are the rats and the mice? <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, no, <clears throat> I mean, in general, it's just that uh, Lena is coming, going back and forth between Canada and Berlin for years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, for quite some time, we found this trio after trying different, different groups of musicians, and we found this to be like a great place to play some music to start with. And uh, obviously, it inspired Lena to write some compositions for the three of us. So we were ready to play when we did a recording. <laughs> And how much is improvised and written, Dan? Well, it's, it's all... Oh, I, I'm not... <laughs> Lino is telling me not to give away the secret, but uh, the secret is uh, we're playing uh, Lino's tunes. Some of them have, have structural elements relatively clear in them, and some, uh, some of them are more just like door openers to whatever world of inspiration or improvisation that we find that we find behind it so it's i would say maybe like a 80 80 20 composed and improvised maybe, oh, maybe. like yeah. 80 percent improvised i mean and, oh, yeah. oh, I see. <laughs> but a very important 20 percent to open things up Um, Lina, you or Michael just told us that you are traveling in between Toronto and Berlin for quite some years. This trio is existing since 2017. Right. So you make a big effort to also have a food in the Berlin scene. What makes it so special for you? Um, what, oh, Berlin, it's what makes it special. I mean, everything. <laughs> There's so much happening here. And uh, somebody was asking me recently about the, the same question. and I. I thought, well, basically, if you can imagine something happening, uh, you can do it in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if I could say that about any other place that I've, I've um, gotten to know. Um, and that, yeah, it's just, it's just really inspiring to be here. You, you're just surrounded by artists of all disciplines, and there's just so much life uh, as far as the arts go. And it's, it's pretty hard to match that anywhere else. And it also, it's very welcoming, so... Um, it was very easy for me to just sort of get immersed in the scene. I just sort of showed up and met this guy, and then there we go. <laughs> That's nice. 
Very nice. Thank you so much. Lina Alemanos Ohrenschmaus, ladies and gentlemen, give a big hand at home, clapping, partying, celebrating these fantastic musicians. Welcome back to the second tandem concert of our Jazzfest Berlin New York uh, edition. With me here now is Max Andrzejewski. Welcome, Hi. Max, to the <laughs> Silent Green. Max is playing here at the Silent Green uh, the second part of this tandem concert. And the opener and the first concert that will be taking place at the Roulette in Brooklyn is Anna Weber. And Max Andrzejewski and Anna Weber have been living together when they were studying both at the Jazz Institute here in Berlin. Welcome, Anna. There, Hi, Anna. there she is. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm seeing myself on a video screen several seconds after <laughs> I uh, am talking, so it's a little strange. <laughs> but this is what we're uh, this is what we're dealing with now, I guess. <laughs> Isn't it great that we can talk publicly over the internet? Many people see how we chat. <laughs> <laughs> Many people see you c trying to convince me to speak German. Yeah, exactly. My, uh, <laughs> Actually, I, th I thought about, about it. asking you. How's your German? How's your German doing? Because last time we Skyped like two weeks ago, which was, it was actually two weeks ago or so, you, uh, we, didn't, uh, we didn't speak German, I think. But we always did when we used to live together. Yeah, auf jeden Fall. Also, mein Deutsch ist nicht so gut. Aber ich kann vielleicht verstehen und ein bisschen sprechen. Nadine told me I'm not allowed to speak German because um, because it's an uh, international audience, you know. So um, oh, we have to whoops. stick to English. So um, yeah, how's the election going so far? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I'm sorry uh, to think, ask this I question. I think we all feel fairly positive right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We all feel fairly positive right now, and maybe maybe it'll be announced while we're playing. Yay. I was playing a concert in Chicago when the tables turned in 2016. So maybe this is the portal that will, uh, or this will close that portal. <laughs> exactly. Maybe, maybe you're the, the game changer. Your, your music, I guess. It's probably me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So I'm, um, um, yeah, I, I'm allowed to announce your band now, which is great, I think. So, um, Please welcome on stage Anna Weber Septat Clockwise with Jeremy Viner, Jacob Garchik, Christopher Hoffman, Matt Mitchell, Christopher Tordini, Chess Smith, and Anna Weber. Thank you. 
Thank you all so much for tuning in online. It's a, uh, we're playing to an empty room almost, but it feels incredible to be playing music together. Um, this is Matt Mitchell on piano. Woo. <laughs> Christopher Hoffman on cello. Jacob Garchik on trombone. Jeremy Viner on tenor saxophone and clarinet. Chris Tordini on bass. Chess Smith on drums and vibraphone. My name is Anna Weber. Um, we're playing music that is off of an album called Clockwise, um, which came out on Pi Recordings last year, which feels like, you know, 20 years ago at this point. Um, yeah, we're gonna play two more little pieces and then um, that'll be it. But thank you all for listening. Thanks so much to the Berlin Jazz Festival for making this happen um, against all the odds and for this whole team at Roulette for doing such an incredible job here for us. Um, thank you so much.
Okay. Wow. Anna Weber, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you all. So, at, at the beginning of that set, you joked about closing a portal. <laughs> I feel like you opened something just now. That was, that was an incredible experience. And, you know, if you had told me that this band just came off of three weeks in Europe on the road, I would have said, yeah, it sounds like it. it. Sounds like you've all been working this stuff out like night after night. So was there a challenge for you actually diving back into this music with these musicians? Or did it, did it all sort of fall, you know, click back into place? I mean, that felt pretty good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, speaking for myself, I don't know about everybody else, but I, I've been so starved to play with other people that yeah. I think you know, it just felt like th this might be the one chance that we have for, for a long time. So, I, yeah, I think just diving back in felt really good. So did, would you say that it felt like a release? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and so was, was this actually the first time that you've performed um, with other musicians in a performance capacity? Like, is this Since the, first the time? lockdown? Yeah. Yeah, I... I've done some live streams from my house mm -hmm. and um, improvised a little bit with some other people, but yeah, this is this is the like first on stage with definitely with a full rhythm section that I've done. Yeah, in a long time. Um, you know, for for anyone who has not seen Clockwise before or who doesn't know um, this great album that released last year, um, one of the the hallmarks of this group is this interaction between extremely intricate um, composition, like very difficult stuff, and um, you know what feels like a total license in the Im improvising. But it's all very, um, there's always this kind of tension between those, those two things. And I wonder how um, intentional that is and whether you feel like it's a shifting scale. It's very intentional. Um, and, you know, this group of people, I, I wanted to play with them because I know that they can do both those things, mm -hmm. you know, shift between the, like, highly notated stuff and then the completely free stuff. And also take the highly notated stuff and interpret it and not just, you know, play the, play the notes. But, um, yeah, so it's, I think, a lot about um, different ways of, of making improvisation and notation um, meld, I guess. Yeah. Given all of the um, references to especially 20th century um, composers, you know, who are typically slotted in the classical uh, category, have you found that, that this music has been embraced more from that world? Um, like, do you, do you hear from people who listen to that music as opposed to improvised music um, and find something to hold on to here? Well, I think, I think the boundary between those two worlds is becoming relatively thin these days. I think a lot yeah. of people who are in the new music world are um, becoming excellent improvisers. So, and, and in the New York, new York scene, too, I think there's a lot of overlap between people who do both things. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think um, it's false to think that there are two separate scenes that are not interconnected in some way. Yeah, absolutely. This is definitely one of the groups that um, exposes the, the, the falsity of that. Mm -hmm. Um, today is a good day for exposing falsehoods, right? Um, I guess one other question. You, you mentioned that you've been improvising quite a bit and you've been doing live streams. Have you also spent these last months um, doing a lot of composing? Uh, yes, recently. It took me a few months to, to get my head in the game a little bit. But um, yeah, in the past, since, since the middle of the summer, I've been writing a lot. I actually wrote three pieces for big band, which seems ridiculous <laughs> right now because who knows when the next time we'll be able to play with the big band is but uh yeah i've done that and i wrote a piece for um this trombone player nick grinder commissioned me to write a piece for him and um now working on a collaboration with the trondheim jazz orchestra oh excellent yeah um well again thank you so much this was just an unbelievable pleasure um you know just to hear the sound of this band in this room. Um, and I know uh, for everyone watching on the live stream, it was also just such a treat. So Anna, thank, thank you, you again. Nate. Yeah. Um, and we will now go back uh, to Berlin. Um, training, which is a, a, a fantastically modern duo, uh, is going to be performing a festival commission. Uh, and so Johannes and Max uh, will be collaborating with uh, John Diederich uh, of Deerhoof, um, as well as the artist Isil Karatas. Uh, so, training from Berlin.
What a beautiful, beautiful trip you offered us here, Max and Johannes and Ishil. Please join me. Wow. I'm really deeply impressed. <laughs> so we will take some space. It's completely up to you if you want to wear masks or not. I'm, I'm speechless, but I need to speak because I'm also the moderator, not only yes. <laughs> the artistic director. Your duty. <laughs> but this is amazing because, I mean, Max and me, we have been talking for quite a while already during the first lockdown period in spring. And then you came up with this fantastic idea to team up with John Dietrich. Uh, and together with Johannes, you are the duo training and then you added to this dream team, Ishi Karatas. Please join us, Ishi, if you want. <laughs> yeah, we have. I have so many questions and impressions that I actually don't know where to start. But maybe just tell us the initial idea again, what you did. It was all about field recordings, about many, many months. And then I'm also, I do want to know, maybe Johannes can answer this then. Uh, we had a movie, John Dietrich was with us, he, he was cooking, making coffee, cleaning <laughs> the kitchen, playing with his dog, we saw his yeah. garden, and Ishil, uh, whatever you want to say, maybe I come up with the next question, but yeah. Max. So, um, the basic idea of this, this whole music that we, that we made is um, that we based the, 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 the tracks that we produced before Jazz Fest that are online and listenable, um, based on, on small field recording loops when we all were in lockdown. And it originally was Johannes' idea, so maybe you can explain it better, uh, what the initial idea about this, this track is, and then maybe I can speak about what we did in our set now. Yeah, the, uh, the initial idea was uh, that we took loops of field recordings of our surroundings, so before I was experimenting with noise, loops of noise, of chaotic sounds, and when you listen to them again and again, you, you, um, hear, you start to hear things in them. So I was um, curious if we all hear the same things, but actually we heard very different things, but there was this invisible connection between those ideas we had separately, and then we put them together, in a long process of many emails, and made those songs out of out of it. Yeah. Yes, and um, yeah, exactly. And Ishu made the videos to it. She used the material of, of um, the little video loops we shot um, that are also used in our set. Maybe you want to say something. Yeah, first of all, I'm very happy to be the one of the physical audience here. It was really great. <laughs> it was not a uh, nice trip for me too. Uh, yeah, I, um, we had nice collaborations and like everybody had this loops and then we had loose associations, but I took them and modified it. It's like really long hours of rendering and editing and putting everything together and sending back and versions of songs coming and going, videos. So it was long mails, but also a lot of fun. I really, I was really happy to be part of this project and see it also here, yeah, what we did. Maybe I can, uh, maybe I can explain a bit what we, what we did in our set now. Um, so, like we said, we, we produced over months these uh, three, uh, three songs that are online and we thought, okay, we want to, we want to have John with us somehow, but we're, we're not really believing in the trying to play together over streaming. We, we actually tried it, but it's, it's just not fulfilling as playing in the same room. So um, we had the idea, what if John um, takes the material that we, that, we are, um, that we made up for the three songs, he takes it and he makes like four 45 minutes long tracks out of it, like kind of remix. And he sent these remix, like these four remix tracks to us 
um, we put it on Johannes four track cassette recorder and rehe rehearsed to this to this um, material and made up um, our set, which is obviously very much improvised, but also has some snippets of the of the original songs. So um, and Ishil kind of did the same. She she lengthened the the material and 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 um, yeah did something else out of it and. Um, then there was this, yeah, we, we, as I said, it was problematic, it is problematic to play together over Skype. So it's, actually it is not working. <laughs> please, please write me a mail if it is working. It's, um, um, but actually, so we thought, okay, if he can't r really play with us, he definitely gets his solo moment. That, so there was like this guitar uh, shred solo moment, but also we want him to be with us we want him to to be in the set, whatever he's doing. So he was completely free, um, <laughs> doing what, whatever he wants. Today he decided to cook, obviously. Yesterday, Yesterday he was his brushing teeth. his teeth. <laughs> so, yeah, that's um, yeah. great, guys. Yeah, that's why uh, you you recognized um, John can do a lot of things. <laughs> uh, very great, um, and he also mastered our new EP, Woo! which um, which is actually. Yeah. Here it arrived today. So usually after concerts we announce that we sell records. Um, we were very happy that the LP arrived today. So you're not here, but you can of course get it in the internet. Fun in the church. Yeah, it's released on the great label Fun in the Church, which is a very fitting name for these times because because um, obviously the only fun you can have at the moment is in church. So um, yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Brilliant, brilliant job. I'm very proud of you guys. I'm <laughs> proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> Training featuring John Dietrich and Ishii Karatash. So now, um, I mean, what a beautiful tandem also. Anna Weber septet, and then you guys, I mean, the beauty of uniqueness. You know, our cultural sector is really badly hit by the corona crisis and also we as the Jazz Fest in Berlin, we want to ask you, the audience, to make a donation to two initiatives we are proposing to you. You can find all of the details of, um, of these initiatives on our website of Berliner Festspiele or Jazz Fest Berlin. Uh, be generous, it's also a gesture of solidarity for musicians and lots of other sectors being part of our big cultural and music family that are not working at the moment and suffering a lot from this crisis. Everything is shut down. I don't need to explain anymore. I think everybody knows. And we are proposing to make a donation for Alarmstufe Rot and Initiative Musik, both uh, based in Berlin. Voila, and that was my serious part. And now we switch over to Jim Black on the drum set, our secret <laughs> artist in residence Always of this year's Jazz Fest Berlin. Hi. Hi Nadine. How are you doing? I'm Jim? good. That was fun. That was great. I hope everyone liked it. <laughs> and as time is running, it's nearly 10 p.m. in Berlin and it is 4 p.m. in New York. We are, ne we are very close to announce our third tandem that is part of our Jazz Fest Berlin New York and we will switch over to Nate uh, Shinnen in a couple of seconds to announce Craig Tabon's new trio. But before doing so, as you are also a truly New Yorker and mm. you know Craig Tabon and a lot of other guys personally very well, I know that you are an esteemed fan of Craig's music and Craig's playing. Why, Jim? Oh, he's one of the greatest of my generation, I think. And I don't mean to use the word great, but he is. Um, I remember first discovering him through Tim Byrne and just his sense of time and groove and rhythm was, was incredible. But then when I finally started hearing him solo around New York, just his solo concerts, that was like another language for me. That really raised the bar as far as like piano, vocabulary, um, the vastness of possibility. He's a king, and he's very humble. He's a very humble man about all this, but he works hard, and um, I wish he was more of a household name. I wish he was the one that you saw plastered everywhere. Um, so there's hopefully time where that can happen, yeah. And the trio, I'm sure, with Mary and Chess 
both fantastic improvisers, and everyone's a great person as well. So that's what, that's what we need around a lot, all of that. I think truly, honestly, it's um, the premiere of Craig Tabron playing at the Jazz Fest Berlin, which is also already existing for 57 years. Exactly. So it took 57 years to bring Craig Tabron with one of his projects to Berlin, even if it's only virtual. And now I hand you over to Nate and Emily to the roulette in Brooklyn to announce the last tandem of Jazz Fest Berlin, New York. Hello, thank you Nadine for that <laughs> introduction again. Um, I'm Emily, not Nate, in case you weren't sure. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. For those of you here in New York, thanks for kicking off your weekend with us. And for those in Berlin, thanks for wrapping up your Friday night with us. Um, I just wanted to emulate what uh, Nadine said here, and that is, uh, if you can, please support the initiatives in Berlin and in Germany to help also support Jazz Fest. I'd also like to ask if you could please take the time to support Roulette. Um, as you know, it takes a lot of work to do an event like this, and indeed our entire season we're live streaming for free. We have no box office. We're doing this because it's really important for artists and for us and for the entire community of people who make ideas happen and who let these ideas germinate and grow and be presented and be in this constant state of becoming, which is so indicative and important to jazz in particular. Um, so if you can make a donation to Roulette, please go to roulette.org slash support. I'd also like to direct you to one of our national service organizations that's very important, New Music USA. In the past few months alone, New Music USA has been able to direct over $1.2 million in funds to over 1,000 artists, and those were in emergency and project funds. They are doing critical work for our sector right now. So if you can, please make a donation to New Music USA, and that is at newmusicusa.org slash Donate. And with that, I'd like to reintroduce Nate Chinen of WBGO Newark Public Radio. Thank you, Emily. Um, thank you all for hanging with us. Um, what an amazing day, night of music. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time because look who's on stage with me. Um, I think Jim Black, hey Jim, uh, might have said it best when he used the phrase vastness of possibility. Um, he was talking about our band leader, Craig Taborn, who's here on piano and keyboards, but it equally applies to his partners in this new trio, Mary Halverson on guitar, Chess Smith, who you enjoyed earlier on drums, and glockenspiel and some other things. Um, so let's hear some music, Craig Taborn's new trio.
This is strange without the ritual of applause, isn't it? Man, I am just spinning from that performance. Thank you so much, Chess and Mary and Craig. Um, what an incredible, what an absurd privilege it is to be in this room with you all, and I hope that um, everyone watching feels the same. Um, Craig, I have to ask about just the, the sensation of that last piece. Um, it reminds me of the way that we've experienced time over the last eight months or so. And I wonder whether there's any part of, of your experience during this you know, strange year that has informed this music. Uh, is this on? Yeah. Um, yes and no. I mean, the, this music was written a couple of years ago um, for the trio with uh, Chess and Tamika, who couldn't be here. So, Mary, fantastic. Thank you for, for coming out. Um, so, the, the, the actual sort of written material was written in different times, but uh, I can't, I, I'm sure. <laughs> that a lot of my state of being right now has everything to do with the kind of the everything that's happened since March for me, or really kind of in February for me. Yeah. When it got going. yeah. How have you been experiencing this time? Um, what is what has your process been like as as a musician? Um, you know, when everything just slowed down. You know, it's been so long. I, I realized recently that I had gone through phases because um, I'd just gotten off a tour. I kind of came, flew back from a solo tour, um, piano tour, in. I was in Rome, and that's when they shut Rome down. They shut Italy down. Like that was the last night they had concerts in in March, and then I left and I came back, and everything was sort of. Um, Intense, but I was. I remember that I practiced piano a lot. I was like on this piano frenzy, and then that kind of. Then I started working on um, uh, mixing this album. I did uh, this Junk Magic album, and then I stopped playing piano, and then I really stopped for like a lot of the <laughs> summer. And then I was doing a lot more kind of electronic music and studio stuff, and then I was kind of doing other things um just saying like there were several phases of of sort of engagement in kind of finishing creative projects and practicing and then a malaise kind of set in mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> maybe a depression i don't know i'm not that clinical to know but right just something and it and then i looked back and, it, and then i remember feeling like not that much time had passed and then i realized that a lot of time had passed. Like a number of things had, <laughs> I had gone through a number of phases and I was realizing that in September. Yeah, like, yeah. no, that, that's a very relatable feeling. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's notable that Mary has, has stepped in and throughout this performance, I just kept thinking, I actually cannot imagine this set without Mary's mm -hmm. voice. Um, and so I wondered for you, especially um, having composed this material with Tamika in mind, um, what has this alchemy been like? And you know, knowing that Mary and Tamika have their own long-standing rapport, um, but it's such a different sonic proposition to have Mary in the band. But it, it works so incredibly well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was it was just great. I mean, I you know I, I tend to compose for improvisers and improvising. So you know, none of this stuff's gripped too tightly or is really conceptualized too specifically especially this this kind of stuff i'm i'm intending it to be interpreted extremely you know or discarded if hopefully you know so um and then when you have kind of master improvisers and great creative minds they kind of can work with it and so you know it it was really fun thank you Mary. Yeah. <laughs> i really had fun well master so, improvisers yeah. is is you know, that's an encomium that everyone on this stage, uh, myself excluded, uh, certainly deserves. Um, thank you so much to all three of you for that incredible set. Um, I hope that you watching on the stream enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, and that wraps up the, the Brooklyn portion of, of this marathon. Um, so we will now uh, go over to Berlin. Are we ready?
if we're ready, we'll go over to Berlin. Um, okay. Um, we, ha we I think we might have bought a, another second. Is that, is that right? Okay. Um, Craig, so I'll ask you then about um, having gone through this set, mm -hmm. um, is there any possibility that we, that this actually could have more life, that we could see this music with this personnel as well? I know that touring is not exactly a, a you know, possibility at the moment, but you know, it, is there any chance that we could hear this again in some way? I, I mean, I, I can't speak for everyone. I would hope so. Where there's a will, there's a way. I mean, Mary and I have always, over the years, we've looked for opportunities to play together. So, because um, we did another thing with Ambrose in in this on this stage, of, I realized it was like four years ago. Wow. Yeah, but um, so the short answer on, on my part, in my heart, is yes. But we'll see what so we'll see what happens, and if if all the agents agree, <laughs> agencies involved. Um, I should add that um, tomorrow from this very stage, we will uh, be hearing from um, some other terrific bands. Um, Joel Ross with his band Good Vibes will go on first. Um, then we'll hear from Chris Davis and Ingrid Laubrock in a duo. And the final set from this stage will be Toma Fujiwara's Triple Double, which includes Mary Halverson uh, among some other terrific improvisers. So now we will go to Berlin. Um, and this is a portion of the band Why Otis um, performing a remix of their music. So this is uh, informed by electronic music and by hip hop production. Um, this is Why Otis remixed. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Dan Nichols. I'm joined here by, by uh, Ludwig Vandinger um, and uh, a couple of days ago, I was coming here to play um, a set with, with the band Why Otis, which is uh, the, the brainchild of Otis Sanswo, who's a sax player who you may know, and Petter Alt, a great bass player. Um, and I found out a couple of days ago that it wouldn't quite go as planned. Um, these are precarious times, and uh, so the... Um, the idea was to try to come up with something else that we could do um, instead and try and make something happen. And, and that's the, the great thing about um, everybody in these situations, that they are trying to really make things happen in, in these precarious circumstances. So I'm really happy that um, we are able to do something. We're, we're going to take the music of Wyotis and we're going to do something with it. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Thank you. 
Dan Nichols and Ludwig Bandinger. Thank you so much, guys. I'm truly moved by what I've just seen and heard because I have been listening to Otis' music and the new album of Why Otis again and again and again. And I'm truly, truly impressed by the high level of musicianship and also friendship among these musicians. For me, that was an electroacoustic symphony dedicated to Otis' music. It had meditative moments. I'm really, really impressed and moved. Congratulations, guys. Maybe if you come a bit closer to me towards the light, maybe you can reveal a bit of your secret of how you approached this project. What has been improvised? Um, I think like we, we had a like a talk with the video artist from before and she was talking about like bending everything and i think that's what we were doing tonight <laughs> like just bending the music like that's the secret i think Dan? Uh, yes good answer um well we we just got together yesterday because we we obviously didn't have much time to um we didn't know about this project until yesterday but uh, we had the tracks from the album and we just kind of pulled them in and we can play them in different ways and use bits of it, you know, kind of cut it. And um, it's really a, an experimental approach and the music is quite, is made like that in the first place anyway. The, the Way Otis album is a bit like that. But, you know, it's a, another step away, I guess. Yes, um, not only Berlin is worldwide known for its fantastic improvised music scene, but also for its electronic music scene. And also you, Dan, you're traveling in between London and Berlin. Um, I mean, we have here two fantastic talents uh, of both scenes, I guess. What makes Berlin special for you? Um, it's, uh, well, it's so different to London and... and there's something exciting about that uh, because I live in London. But uh, Berlin, um, there's a certain, I guess, a, a history of people being free to explore certain avenues. And, and you can really feel that there's like people who have a very individual approach. And it feels it has a, a spirit of rebellion, I guess, the city, which is nice. I hope it stays. Ludwig, you are, you are organizing and curating a concert series called Future Bash mm -hmm. that takes place regularly at Zukunft am Ostkreuz. Yeah, exactly. What is it all about? Um, so my very good friend um, Felix Henkelhausen, who's a bass player, we started this like three years ago. And yeah, basically we just like um, played a concert for three years now every month, um, always inviting people we like um, that we want to play with and like try things out. And yeah, sometimes we like plan a program and sometimes we just improvise, which is really nice because yeah, I think you can really learn a lot by just playing a lot. I think that's the most important thing for musicians, I think, to just play. I agree. Thank you, guys. Thank you again so much. Here we are. We have come to an end. This is it. This has been the second day of the Jazz Fest Berlin 2020. We have seen concerts from Munich, Cologne, from New York City, and of course, from Berlin, here at the Silent Green at Berlin Wedding. Eight hours packed full of music, and music is all about emotions in the end. And I need to admire, I have been moved today quite often. I hope you too at home. We will be back for you tomorrow with our third day of Jazz Fest Berlin from 4 p.m. 10 a.m. in New York City for another eight hours of music live streamed and brought to you all at home. So please, Thank you for joining with, uh, thank you for being with us and join us tomorrow. We will be back. Sleep well, sleep well, and stay safe and healthy. Good night. <laughs>